Hello everybody and welcome to a new dev diary from Prehistoric Kingdom. And this one is a bit of a doozy because we get a new species, two new species in fact, or three if you count the, the last one. Um, yeah, so we've got some new, a new dinosaur, a new mammal shown even. And just going to go through a little bit of a um, quick thing about Update 8 and it's... Um, pre-release uh, public test branch um, just to see what all the issues are um, that can be fixed before its official release. Um, yeah, I think you can tell um, that we got a big surprise here um, for our dinosaur that has been revealed for update 9, the Grasslands update. But we'll get to this um, big old boy a little bit later. But start starting off, we have um, update 8. So update eight is a a bit of a it, it's a big update, uh, featuring some major improvements to the game. So I'll just give you a brief summary on what is in update eight. So we've got a new species, Velociraptor, as you can see right there. Um, animal locomotion and an AI rewrite um, have been occurring, um, bringing all the animals, including Velociraptor, over to um, a new method of um, locomotion and just how they behave and such. Uh, there's also new genetic mutations and variants such as um, al albinism, melanism, and um, leucism. I, I, th I actually don't know if albinism's in. I think it's just leucism, melanism, and piebaldism. Um, there's also guest queuing and decision making, basically um, giving guests a more fluid um, visit to your park. Um, speak your parks, park beauty, basically the value of how um, your parks look. There's also the tropical and scrubland biome overhauls, um, biome presets such as um, an autumnal temperate biome, um, updated modern brick pieces, retextured rocks, automatic foliage removal with the placement of paths, buildings, and etc. Um, a new cinematic camera. I did actually try this out myself in my own time when um, the but when the test branch launched, and yeah, it's going to be very handy in making videos. Um, Nigel Marvin will also be chiming in every now and then when uh, you're doing something wrong in your park, for example. So, say if you're not giving your animals enough feed, he'll chime in and say, probably these animals need a bit more food. I haven't actually tried it out yet to see what he says, but it'll probably be something along those lines, as well as exhibit size and water requirements as well. Um, so different animals will require different amounts of water and sizes to an exhibit. I can imagine a sauropod would require a very large exhibit. Um, and of course, just general bug fixes and and the lot. So um, yeah, that's just a brief overview of what Update 8 has. Of course, not everything. And um, if you go to the Steam page or the actual Prehistoric Kingdom website, there's a bit more detail in what is happening there. Um, so moving on to some of the actual dev diary itself. So I'll just read through what it has to say. Where are at? Throughout October, we got update eight to a point where all the animals had been upgraded and transitioned to o over to version two. Currently, animals almost have total feature parity with their previous iterations, and most of their immediate issues are cosmetic. Things like fun funny limbs, missing audio, missing animations, or animals just getting into places they shouldn't be. Over the next few weeks, we'll be deploying hotfixes and various improvements to update it until it's ready to become a live game. In particular, we'll be focusing on stability improvements as well as ensuring the animals have been well polished with better balancing, IKs, so that's inverse kinematics, additive animation, and audio support. Since this update is just so darn big, the community will be instrumental in highlighting things that we may have missed as well as reporting any bugs or crashes players might stumble across. We want this release to be the best it can be. Why a public testing branch? By creating the PDB, public testing branch, it gives players an opportunity to jump into experimental releases and help us find issues while the team continues to polish and finalize up an update. In conjunction, um, oh wait, I've lost, my, lost the section where I was reading. In conjunction with Dev Diaries, we feel that it's, transparent, it's a transparent way to present where we are and get feedback without pushing a non-final release to the actual live games. Um, players can use the bug report and feedback forums on our official Discord server to help communicate their issues. So how will it be used? 
We plan to use the PCV as much as the team sees necessary, whether it be polishing the next major version, testing new mechanics, or double checking the quality of a hotfix before deployment to the live game. If a patch has shown strong stability from internal testing, it is unlikely for it to be pushed to the PTB. And the question that many of us have been asking, when will update 8 be finalized? We plan to spend the next few weeks addressing key issues and polishing update 8 before it can be released to the live game. We will be deploying hot fixes until the team is ready to move on. So that's just um, a little bit of an overview of what we're looking at in terms of um, yeah, where Prehistoric Kingdom's at, where update 8 is at, and how things are going to be moving forward. Now on to the big stuff. So the future. While part of the team are working on, on support for update 8, the rest are developing updates 9 and 10 in parallel. As stated in the previous dev diaries, these are primarily content focused updates and will be featuring more art heavy additions like animals, maps and building pieces. Please enjoy another glimpse at what's to come. Update 9, new species. Best known for its shark-like teeth and impressively tall stature, one of the largest theropods to ever roam the earth is coming to Prehistoric Kingdom in Update 9. We'd like you to meet the one and only Carcharodontosaurus. This ferocious predator's name is not only a mouthful, but was actually inspired by the great white shark scientific name, Carcharodon. We reckon your guests will be screaming to see this dinosaur in action. And boy oh boy does this skin look fantastic. It it looks phenomenal. It almost reminds me of a Mexican beaded lizard or a Gila monster in some ways. Um, but also hinting back to a little bit of um, J Park, actually. Like, you got the red crest on, um, on well, red, red coloration on the brow ridges um, and a bit of a darker tone for a majority of the skin. But it looks fantastic. This is probably the best Carcodontosaurus I've ever seen in the game. It yeah, it, it just screams accuracy. Like, this thing looks fantastic. Yeah, I'm so glad to finally see a more up-to-date... Um, oh, pardon me, I just burped. Um, a more up-to-date um, Carcodontosaurus in a game or any form of dinosaur media. Because we... As, as popular as Carcodontosaurus is, we don't really get to see it in action too often. But Prehistoric Kingdom is going to give a great opportunity to see what this animal is really like. It is a hecking chonker though. Like, look at it. It's got brilliant folds of skin. The team has outdone themselves with this one. Uh, there's a few more images to um, show for Carcodontosaurus. Like this one showing it in all its glory in the bright daylight. With some Argentinosaurus in the background. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I guess that's probably just draw a comparison to how big this thing was. Um, this was one of the biggest theropod dinosaurs to have ever walked the Earth, as stated earlier. Up there with um, other carnosaurs like Giganotosaurus and Mapusaurus. Um, and up there with T-Rex even. But this guy was a bit more lightly built and um, slightly more built for speed um, than actually tackling its prey. Like, like T-Rex is built to brawl. Um, Carcodontosaurus is built to be a swift killer um, in some sense of the word. But yeah, this guy is looking fantastic. And we get a look at his third pattern. Oh man, I'm having, I feel like I'm having a bit of a nostalgia moment because this Carcodontosaurus, the skin right here, really does resemble, like, did you ever watch Chase by Dinosaurs with Nigel Marvin? There was the Giganotosaurus that was in that had these very similar color, uh, this very similar color combination right here. Oh, I, I, I can't wait to see this guy now. Like, that that looks brilliant. Um, and boom. <laughs> Panthera spelian atrox. So, update 10, new species. Update 10 will be a particularly exciting time for the game, introducing a completely new building team, a new map, and two mammals that we think you'll really love. That's right, more mammals. The first of which is none other than the cave lion. This creature is one of our absolute favourites thanks to their streamlined mane and thicker coats that give them a different look to their African relatives. And yeah, you can see that right here. Um, like These guys are a bit bigger than um, the lions that you see today in Africa and India. Um, they were built um, to survive in the cold. Um, and yeah, I, I have a theory um, that... This new map that we'll be releasing alongside is probably going to be the boreal biome. Like we don't have a boreal map just yet, so um, we but we do have access to um, boreal pieces and plants and such. 
Um, so I think this one will be focusing primarily on that Ice Age Pleistocene era. Um, and yeah, so we've got new map, new building thing would, would probably be sort of um, probably more Nordic or um, Scandinavian potentially um, in, in its appearance. But the two mammals, so we've got the cave lion, of course, so pe both Panthera spelia and Atrox. But what could the other animal be? Like, if it is how I'm thinking it's going to go, um, if it's going to be the boreal map, they're probably going to go for another Ice Age mammal. And the only other two that I can think of uh, would be the Cave Bear and Megaloceros, which are both already confirmed that will be coming to the game. And I feel like this update would be perfect for either one of them. Um, so whichever one they choose um, to go with, or they choose something completely new, like a Melasma Therium would be fantastic to see. But um, let me know what you think the other mammal could potentially be. Or like what would be your number one to come alongside um, Panthera, Spelia and Atrox. So if we go to the next slide, um, here you can see the Eurasian cave line. So that's the one that we had on the slide back there. Um, so this is uh, the one that you've often seen in documentaries um, based around mammoths and and stuff like that so walking with beasts would have had a eurasian cave lion um and it, did you ever whoever watched ice age beasts or ice age, no ice age giants it was called um another documentary that is actually a pretty fun watch uh focusing on the pleistocene animals um towards the end of their time and they focused on the cave lion um for a segment and i think it went to fight a cave bear so if they wanted to harken back to that please do that would be fantastic uh, but, yeah, so we've got the Eurasian cave lion, which is Panthera spelia, and Panthera atrox, which is the American cave lion. So these guys, you can see, um, have a very different pattern to the Eurasian cave lion. They, like, this guy's got um, some pretty good colours. Like, I like that. I don't know if it'll just be two variants. It probably will, but, um, yeah, I like the colours um, here. This is, looks very nice. Like, looking at this lion and looking back at Planet Zoo, we need we need this guy <laughs> we need this face um so yeah so i think it's i think both the males and females of cave lions had manes or like just some sort of um long hair around the neck um i don't know too much about cave lions but i know they existed <laughs> that's as far as i um go with them in terms of um their time i did watch the recent life on our planet um over on netflix that covered cave lines briefly where they were shown to be stark white um but i don't know if that was really the case because um they've often been depicted as brown and um and such but who knows they may have had a winter coat that was white like i know arctic foxes they they have a winter coat so that is pure white to blend in better with snow so who knows maybe the cave line had a similar thing but um yeah i mean we probably would have found one by now but um yeah and so with carcodontosaurus and panthera spelia coming in as well as mataborosaurus which has been seen in the previous two dev diaries there is only one mystery species left that was already showcased with an excavating new species slide this one in particular so this is a very colorful looking species and is probably a dinosaur or it's not <laughs> like it could be a cenozoic reptile megalania perhaps i don't think so <laughs> um, maybe not but um yeah so the grassland update is looking to have two completely new species so that's interesting because um the desert update it had dilophosaurus and coelophysis which were previously confirmed long ago um, and then added Skeletosaurus in. But this one is going one better, where you've got two completely new species that weren't part of the original roster that was um, planned for the game, and instead having two completely new species. Whether this animal is a completely new species, I have no idea. But if it is, that will actually be quite exciting to see what it is. But um, it's got it's very similar to colours to some colourful lizards like geckos and... Um, blue tree monitors so i don't know what it's going to be will it be another carnivore will it be a herbivore uh, we'll have to wait and see but um yeah so that is 
the October Dev Diary. So, um, yeah, let me know what you think of this Dev Diary. Are you excited for Carcodonosaurus? Are you excited for the Cave Lion and whatever else is to come in the Grasslands update, update 9 and update 10 with two new mammals, a new map, a new theme, and, yeah, what's happening in the prehistoric kingdom world. Um, so, keep... <laughs> Keep excited, like lots has lots has happened. Update eight, you can go check that out now on the public test branch. And yeah, I'll keep you up to date as much as I can when it comes to these dev diaries. I had a good run so far, keeping up to date with each month as they've gone by. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to this um this new update and the updates to come because I think I've actually I went onto the Trello once, um, that to see what the uh the slate is for the game. And I think there's an update coming. I think it's update 14 that has like five new species um, planned for us. But um, I don't know if that's changed yet or what. But um, yeah, it's going to be exciting to see if it is. So um, yeah, excited for Prehistoric Kingdom and it, its ongoing development. Do um, subscribe to keep up to date and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. And yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm just so happy about carcodonsaurus it's one of my favorite carnivores but um yeah i'll see you in the next one guys Bye bye